Bam. Bam. Hey, how are you guys doing? Dr. John here for Extract Talks. Today, we're going to be talking about branding. I know we've had a couple of podcasts before this podcast on branding. We've had actually uh, almost two or three different podcasts on branding. Also, since that time, I've spent a lot of time studying some of the cannabis brands that are out there or the hemp brands and attended some talks. So I've learned a few things myself. So I'm just sharing with you some of the things that I've learned. One of the major contributors to my uh, understanding in this area was a guy named Ashley Brandt, who um, worked at Namaji for quite a while. And uh, he is one of the best branding guys I know. And uh, some of this material here comes from him and, and what he has taught us about branding and, and really how you create the underpinnings of a brand. So I want you to know that you can go ahead and enjoy some of our free resources. We got lots of them. Yep. Right? We got podcasts, we got product tours, we got mini guides, but wait, there's more guides and calculators. So we got all those. They're there for you. Go ahead and imbibe them. We are coming out with a business course too that is self-serve. Um, and there's a self-service option. And then there's a actually a paid option on that one too. A lot of people need help getting started. And there are some people who are in business who maybe shouldn't be in business. Maybe you want to be partners with someone or something like that. And you, so you need help understanding where you fit. Does the business plan that you have make sense with people like us who are involved every day and with tons of different business plans? You would not believe the business plans that we get in on a weekly basis. We talk to people all over the world. We talk to people in India. We talk to people in South Africa and South America, all through Central America. We talk to people in the Far East, Middle East. We talk to people in Europe. The business plans are wildly varying. A lot, everybody's trying to do a couple, one or two things. They want to make some products. But a lot of times, there, it seems like everybody's trying to do a Me Too product. And there are a few that are, oh, yeah. I can see you're totally different, okay? And that's gonna have an impact, especially if you are talking about a brand that is either local, which I believe in local brands, by the way, hyper-locality is pretty important. Or if you're going into an international brand, CBD is still pretty much a national brand because everywhere else besides the United States, it's a medical product essentially, but the US market's pretty big. Get yourself a nice new and uplifting brand, and that's going to really pay dividends for you. These are the basic elements uh, of what we've been talking about uh, throughout our entire course, the strategic framework, the business plan, the presentation, the pitch, the private placement memorandum. Now we're going to finish up with a branding exercise. I, I was kind of trying to understand what it is that really boils down what you're doing with a brand. And there are three statements that I came up with that kind of really brought it all together. And any one of them could be, you know, applicable, mm -hmm. but I, I actually added some, uh, some cool type font into that too. So I thought, well, I want to make some type font, but <laughs> what we're doing is we're materializing and, and the dream should be easily transmittable from me to you. We're also trying to solidify a feeling. What are you all about? What is the feeling that you're trying to convey with the brand? Are you trying to convey a scientific outlook or are you trying to convey a feeling of belonging or whatever you're trying to do? You should be able to, with your brand, kind of convey that feeling. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, if you are able to articulate that ahead of time, you're able to create your content around that brand feeling and around that brand and bolster your brand. We've been involved science I mean, with Extract Lab, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much from day one. Where I remember when we talked to our first SEO people, they were like, wow, this is hyper-technical. Mm -hmm. That's what they were saying. What well, does it have to be so technical? I don't know. We, we have a lot of our customers there. They're technical people. Or if they're not technical, they, need to, they want to learn the language. They want to learn it. So if I dumb everything down to give you one sentence paragraph, so what does that really do for you? It might get me to the top of Google, but it's not going to teach anybody anything. <laughs> so if you, look at a, if you look at a blog article, by the way, and it's set up with one sentence paragraphs, that was either generated by AI or someone who can't have an opening line, a body, and then a closing line. And it should, that's a paragraph. Like you have an idea and you're developing it. Run dog, dog, eat bone. That's the, some, of these, some of these articles are like that. And we have a couple of those articles on our website, mostly because Google likes those. Easy to crawl and then easy to understand. Like extraction, good. <laughs> good you good you good you extraction <laughs> we <laughs> so anyway and then pixelate the vision 
you have to be able to pixelate it, right? So you have a vision, you have a dream, you have a feeling, you need to pixelate it. In other words, you have to put it into pixels so that it conveys all those things all in one. So it's cool. It's I can see that there's an entire science around branding. And it really goes back to, in my view, really what you guys look for in your strategic view of your company, what your core values are. If you're able to articulate what your core values are, like building the next, or well, that's one of our core values here at United Science, or, or deliver the wow, that's another core value at United Science, right? So we have core values, right? If you can articulate those values, you can communicate those and actually operationalize them with your team. Okay, you're not delivering the wow. That, that also hits your branding. Your branding's gotta be wow if you're supposed to deliver the wow. I don't know if we did a good job on that. It didn't really materialize that way where we had this great branding exercise and then we did it, we did it. It was just click on Photoshop. Okay, let's get out something quick because we just got this product done. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? That's actually how most people create and are stuck with their brands, Extract Lab is not a brand that we're stuck with, but it's something that we came up with and the domain was available and right. <clears throat> and it was something that we could really, we were first ones there. So we were able to really get a registered trademark on that. That was pretty cool. So obviously you want to pixelate that vision. Okay, so I'm just going to go through in rapid format some of the questions that you need to be asking yourself. And we're always going to bring this back to our very first podcast that we did on strategic vision. That is, what are your core values? What does your company look like in three years? What are your three uniques? What market are you going after? What after? What does your company look like in 10 years? What's the vision? What's the market focus on that? And if you have that in a very um, concise way on a one pager, you're really able to derive from those values what your brand promise is. A lot of times your brand promise is reflected in your products, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, we're delivering a clean, environmentally conscious products to in socially conscious consumers. Right. Okay. That would have a, a different brand promise. We might, for example, say, okay, well, that's why we do organic. Mm -hmm. That's why we socially source our, our ingredients. Right. That's why we go to the level of testing that we do. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't use ethanol, things like that. So what is your brand, brand promise? If your brand promise is something along the lines of, okay, we're socially conscious or we're ecologically conscious or we have an ESG or that type of a framework that might be uh, embodied in your brand promise and it should also be embodied in your company values, okay? So it's the ultimate expression of what a brand stands for in the hearts and minds of consumers. Oh, they are a clean medical brand. Okay, that's a different than an environmentally social brand. It, it's hard to do like a whole bunch of different things all in one brand. Your marketing might be different if you are saying, hey, we're environmentally conscious and therefore, or we're, we only do natural products versus a medical brand, which has more of a stark, I don't know, the medical brands. They're right. typically white background with a lab coat. Uh, very, yeah. Very, what is it? Yeah, Sterile. we're, yeah, sterilized. sterilized, stainless steel in the background with mm -hmm. a, yeah, mask on so you can't see anybody, you know, what they are. And so it's a, that's a sterile type of situation. It, it's really forming the basis of, okay, what do, how do we want our brand to look? How do we want our, our, our stuff to look? So it's what they're buying into and what the brand embodies. So if your brand embodies a med versus something else, something else. Like you know. social would have a lot of people and right. would be showcasing the environment and green and yes stuff. yes exactly yeah maybe showing happy people walking around cleaning up the environment and smoky the bear behind them and stuff <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that you think about the you the kind bar right so w when you think about the kind bar what kind of brand promise do you think that they have i mean what how do they market themselves we've all seen their marketing so i don't know there are you know What's their brand promise? I don't know. It's, it's all, it's a healthy bar. So they want, they, they're trying to convey that it's healthy and it's, it's kind. Yeah. You're kind. Yeah. It's kind to everybody. Yes. It's healthy. Yes. Do the kind thing, not only to yourself, but ever to everyone else around you. Buy it for, uh, buy it for all the other people, right? <laughs> buy it for, so that you not can feel people. at one with, <laughs> with the um, machine that made it. <laughs> so it's something along those lines. Okay, so I, I, we're distilling really what that, that brand promise is from the Kind Bar, just from their marketing, okay? And so what is your emotional essence? So let's go on that Kind Bar theme again. What, what, what emotional essence? It's pretty obvious, right? It's yeah, embodied in their name, kindness, right? Is, do you think Kind is a good brand name? Yeah, if you can get a good website and... Right. 
you don't have other people using that. And so there are some limitations on that. I, obviously, they captured the emotional essence in their name. Okay, maybe you wouldn't want to capture the emotional essence of environmentally social consciousness something, something, or whatever. You probably... You wouldn't want to do that because your brand name would be too long. Mm -hmm. So you, what's awesome about kind is that it's four letters and uh, it's a great four letter word. In fact, that's the one that you need to be uh, doing. So think about that, the emotional essence that they, so the highest order feeling that the brand may invoke answers to how the consumer feels when the brand delivers us on his promise. Okay. And I see that there's a out of spot dot there, but so with like, for example, when Extract Lab delivers on its promise, the promise is that you'll be up and running and we'll give you the information that you need with uh, GMP and scientific solutions for botanical extractions. That's what we do. And we do that from the standpoint of environmental conscious. Notice we're not selling like butane systems and ethanol systems because of that, because we're environmentally conscious. Those are not environmentally conscious. They're destroying the environment, essentially. The other thing would be uh, cost. We want to deliver to our customers not only a uh, package that has the greatest, the greatest, all the technical benefits, but also that it has a low cost so that you are operating and you're able to operate from a sustainable standpoint. Okay. Profitable. Yeah. And, and uh, profitable. Yes. A sustainable from the standpoint of profitability and, and also. So if you guys are interested in that, we have lots of different videos on that. We have calculators also. If you want to learn about anything I just said and say, hey, wait a second, this is not what I understand. You guys should really take the time to go out and look at some of our videos on this particular subject. Just type in how much, how much CO2 was generated from a one gram pen. Just look at that video and you can see what we're talking about. Okay. So what's the emotional essence? I think a, a feeling of security because what we're helping our customers do and what we're helping our protest, our customers do is reduce risk. Right. So... They're saying, okay, look, I got, I have business risk. I have banking risk. I have export import risk. I have all this, this supply chain risk. I have all these things, but on the technical side, I have a good, I have a good set of people who I know are going to get me up and running and I don't have to worry about that. Okay. Right. So <clears throat> a lot of it is just a, a sense of less risk, a sense of security. And that's what we really want to give to you because we're your extended scientific team. That's what we do. So we deconstructed the Kind Bar and Extract Lab. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next one. What is your universal human truth? Ooh, this one's really hard. Oh my gosh. A penetrating discovery about the human and motivation of the strategic target. That would be who are we targeting our message to? That, trans that transcends culture, geography, language to unlock growth. Okay. That's great. So what is the penetrating discovery? It goes beyond observations about consumers and its grounded implications. And it looks at the attitude, behaviors, and beliefs. I already talked about in, in context of extract lab, what is the, what is it? What is it? We're developing the next. We're always delivering on the next. We're, we're delivering the wow and we're delivering the next. In other words, we're looking to be in the vanguard of the next thing but we also have to deliver the wow. So we're not after every little trinket that a professor comes up with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because even though you could do that, it's not, it may not be materially viable or commercially viable or scalable. something scalable. There's all these different constraints. Okay. So we're not following the rabbit trail on a thousand different technologies. We're looking at, okay, what's tried and true. How can we innovate there? What's the next thing and how can we innovate there? And so we're delivering on that. And then we're also delivering learning to our clients. So uh, many of our clients, they call us because, oh, hey, we, we learn from you. And you're not just on the surface. You're like, I learned a lot. I learned. We've had people come to us and say, we learn more than in our college courses. And I have no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. If you go through our technical basis and everything, it really is uh, pretty, it goes into some depth. Um, not extreme depth, actually, because we only do an hour-long podcast, but right. it wouldn't uh, go into the same depth as, uh, say, a, a textbook would. Mm -hmm. But it goes into some pretty good depth. That we've talked about all kinds of things that are technical, and so bit what's the discovering? What's the human motivation that we're really, really looking at? People have an insatiable desire to learn. Mm -hmm. Always be learning. Yep. So we're providing you the ability to learn if you are interested in this topic. I doubt that if you looked around, you, you would definitely see us. And after you start imbibing our material, you probably would say, I'm going to call those guys because we have put a high priority on 
the understanding that you guys are there to learn. We're constantly giving and the yeah. amount of information that you would get from us, you'd have to pay for elsewhere. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we've had consultants saying, Hey, you're putting us out of business <laughs> because we're giving it away. The reality is that there's no need to put any consultants out of business because the real the consultants have a great role because there's a lot of work to be done. Okay. And you can't just get the information and then, Oh, now I have the information and it's done. You got to actually work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the consultants who don't work, yeah, you're going to go out of business. Yeah. Okay. But the consultants who are actually doing work, and running through things and making things happen for their customers and for their clients, then yeah, then that's who cares if they have the information. It's only good for you. So anyway, it goes beyond observations about the consumer. What about the kind bar? What do you think? What do you think the human truth is? We talked about kindness. We talked about the emotional essence being kind. The idea that people are happy right. or they feel more secure when they're kind to other people. So yeah. that's a Right. I think that people are happier when they're learning the basics and they're saying, wow, I'm learning a lot. What, what benefit do we have when we give away like a ton of our, there's a lot of stuff that we could just give away. People are imbibing the information and we gain respect that way mm -hmm. because we're imbibing that information. So people are happier when they're learning mm -hmm. and people feel like they are getting something from us. And we're not just there to sell them on the next right. product. We're not constantly putting our hands and in, in your pockets. Right? Yeah. If you, <clears throat> like, if you call us and say, hey, I'd like to get into this business, of course we're going to try to sell you a product, whatever. Because we are a business. We are a business. Yes. We, we need, yes. So buy from us so you can keep on that great learning. <laughs> and we have all kinds of things coming up that we're going to be wor working on. So let's move on from the universal human truth and talk about what the strategic consumer target is. Okay. This for United Science is interesting. We do hyper-technical content with the exception of this business stuff. It's, that's more consulting content, but we do a lot of hyper-technical content for people that are interested in getting that. I would say that's our, our strategic consumer target is someone who will who wants to learn, who wants to get into a business. So a lot of them are entrepreneurs. A lot of them are, there's, we got a lot of like LPs in Canada, for example, in, at each of the major LPs, I'd say the ones that people know, we have people imbibing our content like crazy. Like they, throughout the whole entire organization, they look at our operational excellence videos. They look at formulations videos. It's not that they may not know the stuff. Some of them really do know their stuff for sure. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, maybe an operator can get a, a better perspective on things and therefore be more intelligent because it's their craft. So we're helping them understand their craft. And we learn from you guys too. So that's what it is. But I think we're really after, we're really after talking to GMP guys, the people who are doing the science. So we're trying to connect with people who are doing science by offering scientific content that would be useful to the scientists. And we're going to, and also people who are in operations we also, interestingly enough, we market to farmers and to operators, okay? We also market to investors because investors need to, oftentimes, a team of entrepreneurs will go to market. And so it's not just the investor that's doing everything. It's not just the operator that's doing everything. You probably wouldn't want your operator to, for example, or your technical team to really focus in and do all the branding because then they wouldn't be doing the technical stuff. Right. So you want to be able to, there, it's a team. So that's why we talk about all these things. Yeah. But we do market to them in specifically around him. What do you think about the kind people, the kind bar people? Who are they? Who is their strategic consumer or target consumer? What do you think? Maybe you got any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> who would, con, who would, if I'm trying to connect on a kind basis and with a, with a human, universal human truth of being happy, maybe that's a universal, right? Yep. Do the kind, but we're talking not only about the world, but our bodies. Right. So I would expect it to be like with health conscious people. I, I keep maybe socially. A, I just think of a grandma, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that's what they're going for. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. You're so kind. <laughs> Oh, here, take this. Would you like a glass of milk with that, with that cookie? Okay, yeah. No, a, a grandma would be a, a, a perfect. I don't know if that's what they had in no, mind, though. Like <laughs> um, when I think of someone with a kind bar, they just, 
they just got off their Peloton and they're refueling with a kind bar because right. they're for beauty to their body and now they're kind to the earth. It's their Pilates and yoga. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Maybe that's it. I, maybe it's not. Maybe I didn't peg it. Maybe I did. I don't know. Who knows? But this is just me. Some ideas there. So what is the benefit? What does the consumer gain when they purchase your brand? These are things you need to ask. Okay. So are they gaining value? That's a question, right? Mm -hmm. Are they gaining the value? It can be functional. Like I get X amount of dollars. So uh, that's called value selling. And if you have a value proposition, you should be using it. Okay, so you have equipment costs you $500,000, but when you use it, the value that will accrue to you is uh, half a million dollars over a year. Okay, actually, that's a really great value, right? If you cannot articulate the value of your product, maybe you haven't even thought about it that way, but that's something that's value. So what's the benefit? In the case of Extract Lab, what is the benefit? We have, there's an emotional benefit because I'm feeling like Extract Lab has got my back and th that they're going to, they're going to get the science. They have a pharmaceutical bent to them there. And there's things that I don't know that they do know because of the projects that they've been involved in. And then so how does that improve my life? It, it gives me some, I'm still probably going to study because I'm an entrepreneur, but I know that they got my back. And so it's making me feel more secure and possibly even leapfrogging over six to 10 months worth of development, right. for example. So that would be a value that Extract Lab would deliver to its customers. We help you get to market faster. We help you traverse your understanding of regulations. We help you implement those regulations in the very beginnings of your business. Risk. Yeah, we help you, for example, get understand what your critical processes are, understand what your critical process parameters are, understand what your system classification is, understand what your user requirement specifications do, design reviews, do risk assessments, things like that. You know, that you really need to have if you're going to become a GMP operator. So those are the things that we, we would typically add as brand benefit for Extract Lab. Or just an example, you would have your own brand benefit. What would it be if we are an environmentally co conscious, uh, social kind bar manufacturer? <laughs> the benefit would be kindness. Kindness, clean energy. It'd be like Bob Ross, the kind little tree, a little bit of happy, happy, happy kindness tree. <laughs> happy little tree. So yeah, so you're not, you are healthy and you are kind all at the same time. And uh, you, you are hiking in the wild and you need, you have the urge to be kind to the environment and to your body. Mm -hmm. Therefore you have a kind bar. That's right. That's right. And I'm kind. Usually kindness. Don't they come with two? They come <laughs> I with think two they do. Yourself? They do. So you have one to share with your friend right. that you're walking with. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Not to, not to make fun of it because we, I think we're nailing it. Yes. I think we're nailing it. Okay. They have got to us, James. They got to us. The virus of the mind. Yeah. It's in there. See, Kind Bar has, you see that? Kind Bar has real estate in our mind. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, where's that scotch bottle? <laughs> okay. They have real estate in our mind. That that should give everyone pause, okay? There's some things that you need to have in your mind and some things you don't need to have in your mind. So let's talk about core beliefs, okay? Foundational value system for the brand, what the brand stands for. This goes directly back to your EOS. This goes back directly to your strategic one pager that I was talking about. What's the foundational value system? What's the core belief? So yeah. with Extract Lab, we're delivering the wow. We're, we, we're building the next. We have, we have some other statements in there that, that are operational, always be learning, right. something that we do internally. So if, for example, you know, people in our company, they can actually if they knew what those core values were, they could say, oh, do I, am I really fit here? Mm -hmm. If I'm not building the next, or if I'm not continuously learning, or I don't know, if I don't, if I'm not there to deliver the wow, just push the button, get a peanut, push the button, get a peanut, push, you probably don't fit in here very well, actually. Push the button, get a peanut, push the button, get a peanut. <laughs> it's not good, no. So what's the single most important thing we believe in? And actually, when it comes to branding, it'd be great to have a single most important thing. Mm -hmm. Extract lab extract lab it's all one word it's a nonsensical word because it doesn't it doesn't mean anything when they're put together mm -hmm. but the lab has an idea of like scientific it's got science and it's got 
separations and it's got this feeling of an air of science to it and in and it also, okay, if you're going to do extractions, you're going to do botanicals and things like that. Right. You know what I mean? You're going to be extracting things. And Essentials. I'm going to go into the laboratory and do that stuff. So you, so I would say we we don't make laboratories. We make production facilities. That's what we do. We're not in like in the laboratory. We don't have an analytical lab. We don't do that. But we still have that idea of science. And then we put behind it like a little leaf. There, so that we're well, now we're bringing it back to something botanical, so people can immediately look at our brand name and say, a "Science Leaf Botanical Bio," something like that. So they're immediately thinking essential oils. They're thinking mm-hmm. maybe some science associated with that. Maybe they're thinking of a big piece of stainless steel equipment. Hopefully, our stainless steel equipment that's there. So that's the core belief. With the kind bar, it's just what's important in life, right? Being kind. Being kind. That's it. Being kind to yeah, you and the world and people. Yeah. So that's the core belief part of the brand. And then the character of the brand, the distinctive long-term personality of the brand. Okay. So get in your mind's eye, the kind person. I, I, I think we talked about it. It's like the hiker. They've got on all their, they've got their hiking shoes on. Picking up. They're overlooking a large landscape of in the mountains, of course, and, and they just did a hike or they just climbed a sheer vertical of 2,700 feet. They're up there. They did it. They did it. They pop out the kind bar and they're nice to their bodies and nice to the environment or something like right. that. Well, but well, also well, there's a kind there. It's maybe trying to convey optimism and yeah, something along those lines. Right. Again, it's kindness, the kind of person that would be kind, right? Mm-hmm. Which is everybody in the world. There are some unkind people, but... They're not always unkind. No, it's just a bad day. They, they had a bad day, yeah. We all have bad days. That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> what you laughing about? <laughs> just kidding. Okay, it should go beyond outward personality traits to the true character. The true character, the learning individual, that's our, that would be the extract lab, the character, the learning, the, the learner, the serial learner. The serial entrepreneur, right. the, it's, the, it's the person who is, is striking out. Our only goal will be the Western shore. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are they all? The only here will be the threshing ore. Threshing ore. <laughs> <laughs> On the Western shore. <laughs> hey, wait, isn't that a song? <laughs> That's the old uh, Led Zeppelin song, right? So then the proof that your brand delivers the reasons to believe. So this is something that's embodied in your product itself. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 What's the, that you are kind or whatever. What's the proof? Okay. Here, for example, we, we have, we have ethically sourced sesame seeds that come only from an organic farm that's been organic for the last 50 years. And we have so. in a sustainably, we do handcrafted and we press all of our oils when we put it together. Nothing. We, we cold press them, but one with the farmer. Okay. So that we are here with the soil. And we feel the soil in our hands and that should all be a part of the kind bar. Okay. Yeah. We're whole grains or simple mixtures, not a lot of filled up with preservatives or not a lot of sugar in there either. They're not very, they're not sugary at all. Well, that's the kind. Okay. So that would be that. What's the reasons to believe with extract level? GMP. Science, all of the throughput, specifications, GMP consulting that we do, all the science consulting that we do. We have uh, all of that. We, do, we have traceability systems and we have, we have traceability software. This is all like putting together a system. So it's an organized cyborg system. You buy the cyborg and you got the system, right? So that's essentially what, we're, what we are about. That's what we've done. And so when you look at the various features within our products, you'll see, okay, yeah, these guys have built this kind of the quality into the product, right? It's spitting out like reports on with barcodes on them and bit traceability on on each run and stuff like that. Okay. We've built that into our product, built quality into the product. We don't, we don't do like welded vessels. Why? Because you can't clean them, guys. Okay, so that's people have these all these welded vessels for their recyclers, and right. like, what the heck? Why they do that? Because it's cheaper to not do a welded vessel. You do a welded vessel, it's cheap, but then you can't clean it. Right. On the like, they have a dome top with a single in. It's about usually about that big around, mm-hmm. and a single out. And they're like, oh, they one. We had one one customer call us up saying, oh, how do you clean this? Okay, well, it's very simple. You just take the cap off and the bottom top, the cap off and the top. You clean the whole thing. I said, what do you do with your other system that's over there in the corner? 
Oh, we can't. Why? Oh, you're, so you're asking me how to clean the, the recycler system, and then you just that, you just you don't even care? That should be. There's your sign right there. Okay, whatever. Oh, so then there, Icon Assets, what's truly iconic? We all aspire to have a truly iconic brand, and the reality is that small brands can be truly iconic in a local area, and then it usually takes millions and millions of dollars to get truly iconic. Think about Coke, Coca Cola, Pepsi, Ford, Chevy, Mercedes, Ferrari, Harley Davidson. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I uh, can't forget those guys. BMW. These are big, multinational, global brands. They're consumer brands. Shimazu. I'm thinking of some of the big companies. Toso. Toyota. Exactly. So all these things, they're, they're big brands. And notice how we're when we think branding, we automatically go to like cars and beverages. Okay. Miller. <laughs> okay. Heck and Shore. Yep, yep. Shells. Francis Connor. <laughs> it's just my favorite. That's my favorite. Let me see. Wheat beer. Oh, let's think of a Scotch one. We got the Balvini. <laughs> That's least it is for me. Can include sounds, jingles. Okay, just do it. Well, these are some of the things that we all aspire to. Mm-hmm. I think that to get to the point where it's an icon or it, it's an iconic asset, it's going to cost you millions and millions of dollars. But you can have a local brand. How does, how, when did Coca-Cola start? They started off as a local brand, McDonald's, same thing, yep. right? Local yep. brand. You just, you, you grow. See all of those things. Yeah. Were very local. So anyway, this is really where you pixelate the vision and you got your logo, you got your colors. Usually it involves a motto, things like that. So that's really what that is. Now let's bring this down into how do you get this done? If you're just starting, sometimes what I recommend you do is to fill out this brand uh, positioning document, which is th- what we just went through. Mm-hmm. Can you answer those questions in a very short way, like right. with one or two sentences Break and say, here's what it is. Break it all down. Mm-hmm. If you can do that in a short sentence for every one of those brand positioning, you really have the basis actually of a pretty good brand. Sometimes your names can be come up you can come up with a name early or you can come up with it later on okay but sometimes your name may support your brand promise could you imagine like dirty dog cbd okay (laughs) and you and then you have the goal of being a a medical brand okay it's it's probably yeah dirty something along those lines right so you want to make sure that your name and and your logo and all that stuff uh, aligns with your brand positioning Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Look, today, in today's day and age, you really need to come up with nonsensical names because everybody owns the domains and you don't want to be stuck with a nowhere brand, right? You want a dot com or something along those lines. A random word generator, nonsensical words, even the nonsensical words. A lot of people have bought up those domains and those real estates. Best names should be nonsensical. I think that's just my opinion. Like kindest, nope. but how do you have to have really deep pockets to put that brand out because... Yeah, you, wouldn't you want kind, kind.com? Uh, okay, who are you going to buy that from? Well, you're going to buy that from someone who bought it like 20 years ago and is sitting on it and they want a, a million dollars for it or something along that line. If you have money behind your brand, by all means, money's no object, I'll go for it. But avoid long word names like Super Alvin Spotted Hemp Clothing Factory Incorporated. <laughs> who came up with that? Unless it's very cool. Okay. Or the, uh, what are the abbreviated yeah abbreviated yeah so i can come up with some like an abbreviated like an abbreviation uh brand can you think of one one that comes to mind is that five finger death punch oh yeah yeah, yeah ffp that's a musical group death ILM. death metal what was that ilm industrial light and magic oh yeah ilm okay there we go mm-hmm. see all right there we go okay so then check to see if domain name is available you had to go to godaddy or whatever you do to do that it needs to be a dot com needs to be available it doesn't have to be a dot com okay it's just that's a the way that's written the way that that's written is very dogmatic but it's not quite that way if you are okay with a ceo that's fine everybody's going to be misspelling it though and typing in dot com mm-hmm. or whatever if you are in you know canada.ca or in the uk dot uk or dot eu those are very popular dot ru for our russian friends check to see if the name has been trademarked now, this is really where you need to check out the trademarks like you might have a domain that's been that's available but it may already be trademarked and you can tell if you can find the trademark in Google or you can find it in something else and then you should look for something else yeah. as, as long as it's the same. So if you have 123brand.com and that's the name of the brand, 123, 123.com, okay. Yeah, and then you find out and you're going to do a clothing line, but then there's 123 and it's not a clothing line. It's uh, in something else. 
completely they may the company who has the other brand may still oppose your brand right. when it goes to registration so you know it, and that's going to cost you money because you might have to abandon it so once you have the top five uh, the leader makes a decision so this is where the where you need leadership to make decisions typically you'll have a whole bunch of people in a room you do a brainstorm session you get a bunch of brands and okay you got maybe four or five choices that may work and then you need someone to make a decision so that's just yes for those of you who are interested in our startups typically what we do is we bring you through this seven step process a strategic review, a branding review, forecast review, a business plan review, presentation review, pitch review, and PPM cap table. So we try to do all of those for you guys, and you can do it on a self-service basis, and that's a free endeavor for you if you want to really get into some one-on-one -on -one and kind of understand what it is that maybe get some of my opinions or get someone else's opinions on, the, get a second set of eyes on your business plan. You can go ahead and engage us on in a different way and by, by all means, but that course will be available pretty soon. And it's really in the basis of our podcast here. We edit our podcast, we put them together into nice courses and stuff like that. So we're going to be doing a GMP series coming up next, essentially, probably for the foreseeable future, we'll have maybe at least 10, maybe five to 10 sessions on GMP. Mm -hmm which a lot of people like they yawn at. So they'll be like, okay, we'll put out all those videos. Boy, we put a lot of work into them. They'll be like 10 views on them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just the nature of it. When you're looking for it, it's yeah, you're looking right for it. For it's you. there for you. And I think it's the future actually of people who are going to be in this area. You're going to have to know about GMP and, yep. and this happens to be what we do. We're also going to do some of that post-processing techniques that's being planned out. So we're going to do a bunch of that. We also have a, a Delta 10 project that we're going to do. So right. we'll see what happens. Okay. So anyway, thank you guys for joining us and hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. You take care. See you later. Boom.